You're watching Capital Connection from the Illinois State Capitol. Illinois Republicans met the push for police reform with reluctance this week. Some asking, what's the rush and why now? Joining me now is State Senator Paul Schimpf, a Republican from Waterloo, uh, widely rumored as considering a potential run for governor next year. Before we get into these issues, can I ask you, uh, could you beat Governor Pritzker in 22? Well, I'm not going to make any, uh, any announcement on the show today. I've, others have asked me about whether I'm running for governor or not, and I've said I don't want to talk about that until after my term finishes this week. What I will say is Governor Pritzker, although I like him on a personal level and I certainly think he's well-intentioned, he has been a catastrophic failure as a governor. The Illinois people need somebody that they can trust to understand the problems they have, follow the rules that we all have to follow, and take on the entrenched special interest groups and political power brokers in the state. Governor Pritzker hasn't been able to do that, so when my term is finished, I am going to do whatever is necessary to make sure that he's only a one-term governor. The Illinois Republican Party right now seeking a new chairman and perhaps a new direction. I wonder how the party uh, deals with, I'm going to call it the Trump hangover. I'm going to quote uh, Senate Republican leader Dan McConkie, who your caucus just elected in the Sun-Times this week, writing, quote, he condemns domestic terrorists who stormed the Capitol and says, quote, our Republican president has abdicated the principles of freedom, law, and order. Do you agree? Well, our country and our state can survive bad leadership. We can survive criminal act activity. What we can't survive is deviating from the rule of law and the level of political toxicity that we have right now in our country. It's important that we realize that just because you have a difference of political opinion with somebody, that doesn't make them a bad person. You know, I think you've heard me say before, if we're going to be able to solve the problems that we face, which are large in magnitude, we need each other in our different political perspectives to be able to understand those problems and be able to build consensus. Uh, let's shift to that discussion about uh, problems in Illinois right now. We saw the tens of thousands, if not millions, of Americans take to the streets this last summer after the police killings of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, uh, Breonna Taylor, and, and we saw the Jacob Blake killing in Kenosha more recently. Uh, many of those people called for change now. Now we're hearing pe police unions and law enforcement leaders in Illinois saying, what's the rush? Where do you come down? How much debate do you think is required before we make a uh, efforts for police reform? Well, what we're talking about is a very fundamental transformation to the way our law enforcement community does business. And these are individuals that put their lives on the line every day protecting us. I think that we owe it to them to follow the correct process, to have a completely transparent debate that goes according to the regular order. This shouldn't be done in a rushed, lame duck session. This should be something where it is done, where there is plenty of time for this to be examined and to have people provide feedback. I think the law enforcement community recognizes that they are not perfect, but they need to be at the table and they need to be a complete partner in trying to come up with a better solution. Right now, today, could you vote to end qualified immunity? I'd have to look at what the bill is right now, and this is the problem with a lame duck session. This is a 600, over a 600 page bill that but has surely been you've put out of this issue. Is still, it is still being negotiated right now, so mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what is in that bill, and I don't know what the final provisions are. Do you think police need to have more skin in the game to feel more accountable on the job? That, that's the general value question here, right? Is should police face either more financial liability? Uh, police also say they might face more physical uh, danger if they end that no-knock warrant. But do you think police, generally speaking, need to feel more skin in the game before using force? Well, police need to know that we support them. And the important thing is if we're ever going to have any kind of buy-in from the law enforcement community for these reforms that we are proposing, they need to be a partner in drafting the solutions. They shouldn't be excluded and be finding stuff out at the last minute. So right now, we don't have enough information. We haven't brought in the law enforcement community to be partners in this legislation. And until we do that, as long as the law enforcement community remains adamantly opposed to it, I'm going to be opposed to the bill as well. You're, you're also uh, one of many state lawmakers here who is a veteran of our military. I want to ask you uh, quickly, I know you've been uh, leading some hearings, investigating how co coronavirus spread so rampantly in our state-run veterans' homes. Uh, what have you seen there? What can the state do to fix that moving forward? 
Well, the most important thing is we need a little bit more transparency out of the Pritzker administration. I mean, right now, if you were to compare the Rauner administration's response to the Quincy Legionella and the Pritzker administration's response to the tragedy, the COVID tragedy in LaSalle, the Rauner administration has been much more transparent than the Pritzker administration was. Like it or not, Dr. Narav Shah, the Rauner's head of IDPH, showed up and testified. We haven't had anybody with any decision-making authority from the Illinois Department of Public Health show up to a hearing yet. That is a shocking lack of transparency, and we deserve to know why it took 12 days from the time an outbreak was, mm -hmm. was assessed at the LaSalle Veterans Home to get an IDPH inspection team out there. 12 days. And when they did get there, they found out that the facility was using the wrong kind of hand sanitizer. Mm -hmm. That means that if they had come out there earlier, at the very beginning of the outbreak, we could have potentially saved some lives. And there are problems, again, in that same Quincy home, initially at LaSalle, now at Quincy also having some fatalities there with coronavirus. Uh, we thank you for your time. We look forward to more of those committee hearings investigating that further as we move on. When we come back, Congress cut taxes for businesses suffering during COVID-19. Why the state could pocket those tax dollars instead.